Okay, everyone, we're going to get started. Um, so just to give brief introductions of both myself as well as Jesus, um, my name is Camille Bagwell. I am the Product Marketing Manager for People Fluent Talent Acquisition Suite. And with me in the room, we have Jesus. Hi, everybody. My name is Jesus Davalos. I'm the product owner uh, for the Talent Acquisition Suite um, in People Fluent. Thank you, Camille. So during today's webinar, um, we plan to go through a brief demo of the new feature that was added this year, the Candidate Compare feature. Um, so Jesus is going to do a demonstration of that feature. Um, but before we get started, I first want to let you all know that um, this webinar is being recorded and will be provided to those who are unable to attend um, within 48 hours, um, just to make sure that uh, we're able to to answer all the questions and, and make everything available to everyone who was unable to join. Um, if you do have questions, I will be monitoring those questions um, and asking them to Jesus during the demonstration. So if you have real-time questions based on the demonstration, um, please be sure to insert that question within the GoToWebinar box, and I will be sure to ask Jesus those questions. If the question doesn't necessarily pertain to where we are within the demonstration, I may hold that question until the Q&A section at the very end. Um, while this webinar is scheduled for one hour, we will try to make it as brief as possible. So hopefully um, within 30 to 45 minutes, just to give you guys back your time as we know that you all have very busy schedules um, and we don't want to inconvenience you. Um, our path forward, um, we understand that this particular product release um, communication was not done in the most ideal manner. Um, and we have heard your feedback and we completely understand. Um, going forward, we will be working on a, a more um, consistent and, and better process to ensure that when you guys receive product release updates and information, um, we're taking into consideration either training prior or post that feature's launch, depending on the feature and the level of complexity, um, as well as um, communications directly to your, your emails um, and, and making sure that our database is up to date. Um, based on some changes within the organization, um, we did experience some database challenges, um, which is why I can say some people received emails while others may not. So we have worked through some of those kinks. Of course, it, it is a, a work in, in process, but we hope that we've settled the majority of those kinks going forward so that we do not um, miss out on communicating with you guys um, in a more consistent and timely manner going forward. Um, again, if you have any questions that I may assist you with or your account manager may assist you with, please feel free to reach out to your account manager. Um, if they cannot answer your question, I'm sure they'll either forward your question to either myself or to Jesus. Um, but if you have any particular marketing-related questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. My email address is camille.bagwell at ltgplc.com, and I'd be glad to answer any of your questions. Um, but your first line of defense is absolutely your account manager. So without further ado, I am going to pass it over to Jesus, and he will start the demonstration. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, as Camille said, it's just like we had some uh, communication challenges, but I would like to uh, extend uh, our apologies and hopefully uh, that we are going to try to resolve these uh, in the future. So uh, without going uh, more on these, I'm going to start uh, showing the, the demo. First of all, I would like to uh, switch on my so the agenda obviously we pass it to the introductions uh, we want to do I want to do a compare a candidate compare overview I'm going to do that while I do the demo and finally I'm just going to go to the people from product portal so I'm gonna if you haven't seen it I'm going to show it to you so you can know what it's about uh, and finally we will go to the questions so the candidate compare overview, and let me switch back to my view here. Um, so here's a demo environment that I have right now. 
Um, so one of the things uh, uh, the important to take notice here is that the candidate compare feature is uh, something that if you organization doesn't need it or you think it, it doesn't uh, is not uh, for you, you can turn it off. It's just like this is a self service uh, that you can go to the admin section and under client parameters. Uh, we have a candidate compare. Uh, you can turn it off. Uh, then after you turn it off, uh, you can save it. Uh, once you save it, then you can refresh the page and automatically uh, the compare feature will be disabled. Also, uh, we have a, a permissions, the role permissions. So if you want to uh, show these, uh, the candidate compared to certain roles and not all the roles, you can go to the uh, RMS admin portal and go there to the roles. And we have one role called it compare candidates. And you can select it, enable it for only the roles that you want uh, your organization to see. So those are the two um, set up uh, uh, parts in the in the candidate compare. So it's fairly easy. Uh, and I know some of you have uh, turned it on and then you're gonna wait uh, for train your organization or uh, to check it out. So if you are a client admin and you want to check it out for yourself first, you can enable only for yourself the role and then uh, turn it on. So that way you are the only one that is gonna see that uh, feature. Then later on, you can actually select the different roles that you want to uh, assign it this feature and then uh, go to those permissions and generate it. And then those people are going to see on the roles are going to see the, the new feature. So those are the things. Uh, just And uh, another thing is a uh, that uh, we have some uh, questions during the last couple of days. So the question first it was, uh, what part, uh, what what is doing? We're just like what candidate compares doing. Well, so candidate compare what is doing is a text analytics of the uh, job description, the requisition description, and also the resume. So there are two pieces on the. Here that is uh, basically is taken. So the position description and the position requirements. So those are the two things that are taken in consideration uh, to do this analysis. So we took the text out of these and we compared the text with the actual resumes on the candidates. So what happened is like we look for matching words between the candidates and resumes. Uh, in the requisition folder, so in, in one of the particular requisition folders. After this, basically we do um, uh, a correlation analysis uh, between the candidate and the job description, the, the, the position requirements or the job description. Uh, we do a correlation with the words that are basically on it. Uh, after that, we basically make another correlation and we put like a top uh, candidate who is the best candidate uh, in that uh, folder. And then from there, the other candidates uh, have a lower score. So you will see the scores there uh, from a starting from the 100 that is gonna be the best candidate according to correlation between their resume and the uh, requirements that are in the text. One thing to have in, in consideration is like if you have a custom field for your uh, position requirements or job requirements, uh, this is not taken in consideration that. So we're taking only the core fields. If you uh, have it enable it, you're going to see that there is not going to be a score. Uh, and if you try to do a compare, we're going to uh, show you a message that it's just like there is no um, uh, information in the requirements uh, available. So um, in order to take advantage of this, you have to move to the core fields. Uh, for now, we are gonna look uh, and see if we can add some custom fields. So, because it's more challenging on the specifically custom fields that every organization has. Yeah. 
So we have one question. Yeah. Um, does it eliminate candidates who don't meet the minimum requirements? No, it, it takes all in consideration right now. Um, another question that uh, we had is just like, hey, can can them, there are certain words that it can be more uh, weighed in. Uh, right now, it's not possible. Uh, we're going to look on that one. Um, like, for example, if you're looking for, I don't know, a SQL developer and you want the SQL word to be more higher than the other ones, uh, right now we don't have that one, but we're taking that into consideration. One thing that I would love to, and I'm going to go to the end, every suggestion that you have, any idea to improve the existing features or uh, a existing functionality in the recruiting portal, uh, we're going to go to the product board, and I'm going to show you quickly how to send a suggestion and send an idea of improvement. So to um, this particular question, um, Jesus will also go through um, the percentages and what the color codes mean, which I hope will, which I think will also help to better answer that question. Um, when he gets to that, you'll I think you'll understand um, what that means in in respects to the minimum requirements based on the job description and that candidate's um, particular resume. Um, so that will be answered a little bit in, in detail um, when he explains the percentages next to the candidate's names. Yeah, so uh, as you can see in just, uh, for example, you see here uh, a different uh, percentages and you see different colors. So the color means that, uh, so if the candidate has a match, basically a good match with the um, with the job description or um, the requisition description, uh, basically it's going to be from 66% to 100% uh, is going to be green. So that's going to be the color coded uh, for green. Uh, the ones that are in yellow, that means that are between the 33% and 65%. So it means like the, the text analytics between both the resume and the job description, give it that score. So one of the things is like the score is related to the top one, to the 100% means that that candidate has the best correlation between the resume. So from there, we will basically go to the rest of the candidates and give it a percentage uh, correlated to that. Um, the candidates that have lower correlation, uh, it will be under 33% that it will be in black color. Um, so that's, that's the color coding uh, that we have uh, right now. And I know some of you had uh, questions as well that it just like, how does this work? So it works fairly uh, uh, kind of simply, just like we look to the words that we have uh, in the job description and we have the resumes. So we match those and say, okay, this is, has really a good correlation between those. And then we say, hey, between all the candidates, it's just like between the correlation between of them and the resume, which one are have the best? So it's just like we give it 100%. So you will see it. And this will help a lot during the high volume uh, or when you have a lot of candidates. So for example, if I go here, I have like 36 candidates. So you can see like a lot of these candidates doesn't even match uh, with the actual uh, job description. But I can see that there's one here that uh, uh, pops out. So that candidate has a better correlation. So it will help a lot to, instead of going to a lot of these candidates when you have a high volume uh, of uh, uh, candidates coming in, it's just like it will help you out at least to see the best candidates uh, that it has. Yeah. So we have another question. Will there be data available reporting so we can see the candidate correlation over time? So there is no reporting at this moment. Um, uh, the thing is, uh, once a candidate is moved to one of these folders, the correlation is updated. Uh, so uh, this is because uh, more it has to do a correlation between the same candidate. So it's just like one candidate comes in or you're having uh, multiple candidates coming in. So it's uh, going to update the scores because it's just like new candidates can have a better score, obviously, uh, than the other ones. So we don't have a reporting uh, right now. Uh, 
So we will have to look into see if at the end of the uh, basically the hiring process we can do uh, reporting in just like. But we, we will take that into consideration. Um, when you say another question, yeah. when you say it correlates versus the resume, does this include when a candidate has attached their CV as a PDF slash Word document? So uh, that's a good question. So the, the candidate needs to be, uh, we have to have a resume here, a text. Uh, a, and the, this can be the resume builder or it can be a resume that it was uploaded uh, to the career site. Uh, if there is no resume here, it, we cannot uh, basically correlate to that one. And unfortunately, it's just like, um, and, but yeah, so right now, if you go into your actual candidate uh, site, to your career site, it, you will have this resume here or your resume builder. So, yeah. so if the resume is attached, it will do the correlation. If it's a, if, if, if candidates attach that resume through their profile, like yeah, so it, applying for the job. Yes, exactly. And if you see the here, the resume, you will basically have that correlation. So it has to be indexed in our uh, search engine. One more question, or a couple more questions. We sometimes have one hundred of applic, or we sometimes have hundreds of applicants. Is it possible to have a score in the in the candidate list frame? to filter on? That's one of the um, uh, suggestions that we had. We're exploring that uh, as well. Uh, so uh, when you go to the actual um, uh, candidate list, you will see here that right now we don't have it, but uh, uh, we hear your suggestion. We're going to look uh, and see if it's possible to hear so we can filter out that. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, more of a comment reporting, sorry, um, is the correlations affected by the cover letter? A cover letter are also included. Uh, I will have to go back to you on that one. I believe so. That is part of that. Um, because if we put it in a single uh, file, uh, that it will be like the whole resume. But let me double check on that one. So I, I will get back to you uh, uh, on that answer. Um, but thank you for the question. So, um, so uh, just moving forward to just like, uh, as you can see, uh, I was saying that it's just like when you have a, a lot of candidates, you can go and see which candidate had a better percentage. Um, a couple of other things uh, to take in, in consideration is that uh, if this is right now in English right now, uh, so we are looking to expand it to more languages. Uh, if you uh, have a suggestion of languages that you use so we can prioritize those languages, it will be actually uh, better for us so we can uh, look into those. Um, uh, another thing that I will uh, go to is that we have another uh, analysis, also a deeper analysis to those uh, uh, candidates. So one of the things that we can do is select these candidates. Uh, you can select it with the control. So normally when you can grab it, multiple candidates. So you can right click here and select compare candidates. Uh, this will uh, select the select uh, these candidates. Uh, you can select up to eight candidates at the same time. Um, uh, but I, I do this here uh, for just uh, for the purpose of the demo. Uh, we had a question just like, can we compare more candidates? Uh, and, and this last week, uh, uh, right now we limited to eight candidates. Uh, this is because of the uh, sizing of the uh, screen, uh, but we're gonna look and see if we can do something about it. Uh, we we hope you get, uh, we give you an answer, uh, but we're looking to all your suggestions how to improve this. Um, so one of the things here is like uh, we want to start looking to the um, to the candidates more in deeply 
here. So the first thing that you're going to see is like the some wording around these candidates. You can see here uh, these uh, parts of these how it's like a percentage is correlated to those. Um, you also see uh, this bar. This bar would mean like we have a hundred percent on these, and this candidate represents compared to the hundred percent. So this guy, this Janet, sorry, Janet is uh, uh, at hundred percent, and the lowest person uh, is around twenty twenty five percent. So you can see here is the person that is at twenty five percent that is uh, John and here's Janet so the other two candidates you can see that is there is a correlation so this correlation is only between those four candidates so just like just uh, uh, taking that into consideration you are comparing those candidates with the actual resume uh, with the actual uh, job description as well uh, so you can have a word cloud. You can see the more uh, utilized words that they have in their resumes. Uh, you can see there. And uh, finally, there is uh, this graph. The last graph uh, uh, basically is the same graphs at the top, but this is like all putting it all together. Uh, also, we're improving also as well the a word detection. So we want to eliminate words that are repetitive and, and those uh, 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 job descriptions on resume. So we will be adding those words to our basically uh, knowledge database so we can discard those words that are doesn't mean anything. So the weighted resume description similarity is basically just like, well, we have a Janet that is 100% uh, and the uh, differences with the other two candidates. And the relative correlation strain, uh, this is just the candidate itself. This is not taking into consideration the actual job description. Uh, it's only between the four candidates and their resumes. So uh, you can do this from multiple parts. So you can go to, uh, for example, uh, let me go to these candidates as well. Uh, you can do it from the, uh, here from the right click menu, or if you can go as well from the, from the hiding, uh, from the uh, candidate list. So you can select here the candidates as well and click actions uh, compare candidates so you will see here the same um, uh, correlation so you will see here all the words like uh, team developer project manager etc um, so you will see as well the different words a uh, cloud that are important in the resume and the same thing here at the end so you will see a uh, correlation uh, between the only the candidates itself. Um, I have a couple of questions. Sure. So going back out to that main screen that you're on. Okay. Question number one is if you could confirm if the candidate has attached their resume as a document that needs to be uploaded, i.e. it doesn't appear as text on the resume screen, mm -hmm. Can you still does it still do the comparison? No, it has to be in the text uh, in the text part of the uh, resume panel. So if it's uploaded just as an attachment, the the issue is that we don't know what type uh, of attachments it is. So it could be there could be multiple attachments uh, in the attachment area. Uh, so we will need to know what what the file do we need to use. So in the on the resume panel, that's why we have the resume section there. So that that, that will be the thing. It's just like we will have to look at it and see if we can attach and say, hey, this is a resume, please take it in consideration. But as right now, it's only the resume panel right now with the text there. Okay. Yeah. Next question. If candidates are added to the workflow from the database, Will their resume also be added to the compare process? So if it's added from the workflow. Yeah, so I, th I think I, I get the idea. So if you add another candidate to the, um, to the workflow, yes, this 
uh, this candidacy will will get into consideration. Uh, the thing is, like, it will be uh, you can move a candidate, and let me show you. Let me move this candidate, uh, one candidate back, for example, one from Heidi Manager. Let me move it to the interview. Uh, so let's say we're gonna move this candidate here. Uh, so what is going to happen is that that candidate is not going to have, oh, I have a trigger, um, that. so this candidate is not going to have a, resume, uh, a score right now because it's being calculated. So it's, it has to take a couple of uh, two minutes, approximately two to three minutes that it will calculate uh, and index it. Uh, to the search and basically we will have a, a new correlation. So uh, you will have to wait a little bit, but yeah, so candidates come into uh, another requisition, another folder, uh, basically are going to be taken into consideration. So then this kind of adds on to the next question, which is, are candidates' percentages continually changing as new candidates are added to a folder or moved from a folder? Correct, yes. Yeah, that's correct. It's just like because we have to take in consideration that new candidates can have a higher correlation uh, with the job description. Um, so I think uh, the, I have a uh, question. Yes, uh, the the I think that's uh, uh, pretty much the demo. But it's just like if it's, there is more questions coming in, I'm happy to answer those as as much as I can. Can I'm you trying to go to the Sorry, go ahead. Can you remind everyone how many candidates does um, are allowed? What's the maximum quant um, number of candidates? Yes, ah, that's a that's a good question, Camille. Um, so right now we have a limit of, uh, I believe, in 500 candidates on a particular folder. So if you have more than 500 candidates in one single folder, uh, the rest of the candidates are not going to be taken in consideration for the correlation because we have a uh, maximum number of 500. Uh, but those 500 will have a score and correlations. So you could essentially move the blacks out of that folder yes. and new, based on the number of blacks you removed, new number of candidates will then filter into that folder. Yes, that's correct. So yeah, so is the lower scoring, you can move it and then just like as more candidates coming in and just like those are going to take into consideration because the, 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 the analysis is still, still taking place. Yeah. Is there a way to export the chart view? So right now there's no way. Uh, thanks for the suggestion. We're going to look into that to see if we, we can uh, do that. But thanks. Uh, we will look at that and we're taking notes of all your questions and suggestions. Um, and I'm trying to read this as either a comment or a question, so I'm going to read it out loud. Um, but if it's a comment, then we'll address it later. But if it's a question, then Jesus can take care of it. Actually, my right-click menu does not have it in the list on the far left. I can do it in the bottom panel of the candidate list. Is this a setting? Okay, so I think uh, it, if you don't have the right click, uh, it could be that you don't have the permission enabled. Uh, that's what I will think. Uh, so in order to have the compare candidates, the, as I said, we have to have the parameter on. Uh, so either the percentages or the comparison, both, uh, have to be, uh, are managed by this parameter, uh, so you will have to turn it on. Uh, we're gonna see if we separate those. Uh, I have some comment about it that it's just like, hey, I will not like to see the percentage, but I want to do compare of candidates. So we're gonna look into that as well for. So if you're able to opt out of the percentages next to the person's name, but still be able to do the candidate yeah, compare. Yeah, exactly. Picture. Yeah. So okay. we're gonna look into that uh, and. Uh, uh, with the engineering team, uh, but yeah, you 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 should have that uh, um, option of compare candidates uh, when the parameter is on. This is a great question. Does the correlation consider U.S. versus U.K. English in the job description and resume? Spelling can be obviously slightly different. Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, I think it's it mostly 
we focus on, on English. It's just like I think it, the spelling is differently. I think it's more uh, on the side of uh, American English. Uh, we're going to look into those uh, uh, differences and start making changes to the uh, to the words. Like I said, some words that we have to exclude um, from the text analysis as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for all the, your suggestions. And I think it's just like, and in, I think that is a good segue uh, to go to the product board. Uh, and if we have any more questions coming in as Jesus is going through the, the product portal, um, we will we will go back to the demo um, uh, screen if we need to, to answer any further questions in this process. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to, to ask them while we have you guys all on the line. Um, and we will also be sure to provide your questions and the response to those questions in our follow-up communication as well. Yes, uh, thank you, Camille. So I think it's uh, uh, if you have suggestions for Candida Compare, we encourage you to go to the our People from Product Portal. Uh, our pro uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, this is the our Product Portal. Uh, what it means is like we are going to let you know what things are coming, what things are under consideration. So here you're going to see basically our roadmap and we're going to be adding more items. So here is our all people fluent suite. You have the net dimension, the learning net dimensions uh, that I joined to the people from family. Uh, we also have the talent management uh, performance platform. And you're going to be uh, seeing the launch on the launch uh, part. So launch it means that things that went out. Um, so we have, the, for example, the talent acquisition. And uh, we still have the candidate compare here. Uh, and if I encourage you to make suggestions uh, and vote, you can vote for things here. Uh, so you can go to right now what we have uh, on the fly is the candidate APIs and compliance secure attachments. So we're making changes to the attachments to make it uh, secure the visibility. You can see a snippet of the information here of what it's about. And eventually when we are close to the release, we are gonna uh, make sure that the communication are followed properly. And, um, and we are gonna give you all the tools to know what it's about, uh, how we can uh, basically see these and manage these uh, features. Um, so I encourage you to make a uh, comment uh, and, and vote on these. So for example, you can see how important it is for you. For example, uh, the candidate APIs, you can see, hey, this is really important for me. This is critical or this is nice to have. So we want to hear your comments, your feedback uh, from uh, these aspects of the different products that we're uh, planning. So we have a, so, a number of different items under consideration. We are looking for your feedback. How do you use it? How do you, how your organization basically manage this right now? If you don't have it, uh, why do you need it? They just like really explain to us uh, on your organization how you will use it or how existing uh, it is the problem right now that you have and that you need this feature. And that will give us tools for us to better build a feature that you are going to use. Uh, if you don't see anything here uh, under consideration or plan, you can submit an idea. Please submit your ideas, just like the candidate compare. Uh, if you, that will give us uh, more tools to look at it. Say, okay, the response has been like they want an, an update on this. So we will put it here. Uh, this what do you think is important for you, and and obviously as well the ideas that you want to do. So you uh, added the email as well, your email uh, in, the comp in the organization and just send it to us. We will take a look to all your suggestions. We're going to see, uh, we maybe are not going to be able to talk to you personally, but we're going to try to do our best to reach back to you eventually to give you more, uh, and get more feedback about this. And, but yeah, so, and, and one of the things is like, 
we want to the candidate compare evolve and that's why we have the artificial intelligence tool so we want the candidate compared to evolve to more a semantics and that's uh, where we headed that's why it's right now under consideration so we have two questions that are pretty much related um, one is is the candidate compare functionality rolled out to all clients as of today or is there a phase release schedule. Um, this feature was launched and made available to all clients on January 8th. Um, there will be, this is not a phased release. Um, there was a lot of testing that was done in November and December, um, but we did not communicate besides a year in review that took place in December. We did not do any further communications in the month of December based on it being the holidays and, and not wanting to inundate clients with email communications. So, um, both good and bad, this feature was released on January 8th, as well as release communications took place on January 8th, informing clients of this um, new feature being added into the talent acquisition suite. Um, and another question was, is this now available for my organization? Yes, it was automatically turned on for all clients. Um, Jesus showed, um, earlier on in the demonstration how to turn this particular feature off if your organization or if you as an individual within your own dashboard no longer want to see that comparison, how you can turn that off. Um, and he can quickly show that again in case you would like to see that, but it was turned on automatically for all organizations. Yeah, so the parameter is for all, uh, for admin, so you will have to turn it on for the whole organization or turn it off as an organization. Uh, but you can turn it on and off as well with the role permission. So if you have a certain roles that you don't want to, as an organization, to see it, it's just like you can turn it off uh, as well. Uh, and let's say that you only want to uh, show it to um, recruiters, but not hiring managers. You can segment those uh, things out, but the parameters still need to be on. Um, there so, was another, sorry, did you want yeah, to no, uh, no, the other thing is just like that I, I want to mention is just like, uh, so yeah, so we release these, uh, your organization maybe is off, uh, you can turn it on or generate the permissions in the role and then you will see it. So those can are- Can you show them how to generate those permissions? Uh, yes. I, I Show them that? I, I, yes. And I just threw Jesus off everyone. Yeah, I don't have it ready. <laughs> Uh, and Give I will, a moment. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I think I need to switch from my machine. So I think it's just like one of the things is you can go to the, um, uh, documentation and you will see there the documentation, how to do it. So the admins who are uh, the ones available, uh, to do this. Uh, one thing is like, uh, we had a, a few issues on the candidate compared. There was like, uh, some edge cases that we're going to take that uh, uh, release it today. So there is an update coming in today, but it's just like not as a feature, but just a, a some bug fixes uh, that we found uh, after the release. Uh, together with that, there's going to be an updated documentation coming out uh, the, today. So uh, it will be posted uh, in the same place. Uh, later today, so the same release from January release. So. so the January 8th was the official release of the feature. Um, uh, today, as of January 23rd, additional bug fixes were released, are going to be released as well. Correct. And then the updated information will be within the system yes. for clients to have access to understand yes. instructionally how to navigate. Yes, and so today we're going to release an uh, updated version of the release notes, so just to clarify a couple of things and uh, on, on on the items that we got feedback. Great. Yeah. Um, can you see new documentation with record? So yes, um, I'm, Sharon, I'm going to answer your question in a second. Um, first, I want to answer Mary Jo's question, and that is, um, inst that this, um, did I hear correctly that this instructional webinar will be recorded for future reference and self-training? Yes. Um, and this answers Sherry, um, Sharon's um, question as well. This webinar is being recorded as well as I've recorded all of your questions. We will answer all of your questions and provide both the recording and the questions um, to you as well as those who are unable to attend after um, 
within the next 48 hours. And the other question from Sharon was, how will future releases be released on or off? So it, that depends uh, in, in the nature of the, um, feed, uh, the feature. Um, but uh, uh, for example, Candidate APIs, for example, is nothing that you will see uh, on the actual uh, candidate portal. Uh, but we're going to try to do uh, a off and let you know about that. You can try it out in, in there in your organization for the administrators, and then you can turn it off for your organization. So we're going to work on that uh, process. So and we will communicate that as well. Uh, but we're gonna try to not disrupt your day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations. Uh, that's our goal. Will the candidate compare graphs be available for profile review on the recruiting mirror? So that's, uh, we're looking into that. Uh, we, uh, we had that question, sorry that I didn't get back to on that one. Uh, but yeah, we're looking into that as well. Uh, I don't have an answer right now, but it's just like we're going to look and try to export those uh, as well. Uh, the thing is like uh, the, the, the comparison has to happen with all other candidates. So we're going to try to see if we can get at least uh, some graphs that are individual graphs, at least from the uh, candidate. But yeah, um, I think it does. Uh, so if you don't have any additional questions, um, please feel free to email those to myself. And that is Camille, C-A-M as in Mary, I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, dot Bagwell, B-A-G-W-E-L-L, -L -L, at L-T-G, P-L-C, dot com. And if you can email those questions to me um, within the next day or so, I'll be sure to also include those questions with the other questions asked during this webinar to make sure that we answer them and provide them along with the recording. Yeah. Um, and also, just to reiterate, just like if you have any suggestions to improve the this feature, the candidate feedback, or any other part of the uh, actual application, uh, I encourage you to use our people from product portal, uh, submit your ideas, uh, and we will gladly look at it and just try to improve things around. Uh, you can also vote here. Uh, for the different uh, uh, items that are in the consideration for the roadmap. One thing is just like if uh, there is a question, where do I find this link? Uh, in the support, our support site, uh, you can go where you uh, submit send desk tickets. Uh, you can, uh, there is a link there next to the submit the tickets for the product portal and you can uh, submit your ideas there. But thank you so much for everybody for joining, all your questions. Uh, thank you again, Camille. Great. So thank you again, and we will be speaking with you all soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.